Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm here with my favorite science fiction books that I read in 2022. Um, as I probably have said previously, I don't know what order these videos are going up, but uh, this year I'm splitting up my favorite books by um, genre category because I just I read a lot of books this year and I just thought this was a better way to do it. I will also be doing a like best of the best ranking near near the end of these videos. Um, but these are going to be the science fiction ones. I don't read a ton of science fiction, but I feel like when I do pick it up, I'm pretty good at um, finding ones I really enjoy, which I think is shown by the fact that, as far as I can remember, I think all of the sci-fi books I've read um, I put on this list because I wouldn't include them if I, like even though I only read a few and I could include them, I wouldn't include them if I didn't actually want to, you know? So I have four to talk about. I did rank these in order from um, least favorite to favorite, even though when you're talking about your favorites of the year, even your least favorite is really good. Um, so first I have The Kingdom by Jess Swathenberg. Um, this is a really interesting take on, it's kind of like if, if like a Disney theme park had a bunch of like AI um, who were like the characters and princesses and everything, um, and they were like completely dedicated to making the guests um, you know happy, and this book really explores the damaging like implications of that. Um, our main character is Anna, um, or Anna, and she loves living at the park. She's very happy. Um, she doesn't really question things about like the way that she and her sisters live, um, but then things start going wrong. Um, some of her sisters go missing or have terrible things happen to them, and it makes her start start questioning things more and start wondering if um, some, some things are going on that she doesn't know about. And you guys know I love the exploration of like the humanity of non-human characters. Um, I really enjoyed Anna's character growth and her like figuring out like what kind of a person she is and um, just like the exploration of personhood in general I really enjoyed. Um, I loved the setting, like this kind of super intense and kind of creepy version of like Disneyland. Um, I thought that was really interesting. I found this a very compelling read because um, there is sort of like a mi murder mystery aspect in this book where um, we know that Anna has been put on trial for murder and we get like the chapters like leading up to that, which you guys know I'm not usually a fan of flashbacks, but this didn't feel like that to me. This felt like um, we had like the main story and then like those teasers about the trial and I really enjoyed this. Next I have to mention a short story. Um, it was, or I guess it was a novella. It's one of the novellas I read in Five Glass Slippers, which was edited by Anne Elizabeth Stengel. Um, and I don't actually remember the author for the one I'm talking about. I will put that in captions, possibly on the screen as well. Um, but this is the science fiction one and I loved it. This is, I think, the only story in the collection I gave five stars to and it's obviously a Cinderella retelling and it is set in space. And I was just so impressed at how quickly I got attached to these characters, how invested I was in the story, the creative take on the Cinderella story, um, and the fact that like, yeah, sci-fi is not one of my favorite or most read genres, and yet I was really, really blown away by this story. I was also very impressed with how easily understandable the sci-fi um, like setting and technology was, because that's something I can sometimes struggle with um, or struggle to stay engaged with, and I just thought it was really, really well done here. Um, by the way, like I said, I gave this one five stars, and at The Kingdom I gave four and a half stars. Then my second favorite is another four and a half stars, which you might wonder why I ranked it above like a five star story. Um, that's just how rankings and ratings happen sometimes. I'm sorry if that frustrates you, but that's just like, it makes sense to me. Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol. Um, this is a kind of contemporary sci-fi because it's mostly set in our present day, except with um, much more advanced AI technology. Um, I'm realizing this is the second one on this list that has kind of an AI exploration. Our main character is named Cora, um, and she is autistic, as is the author, and she ends up becoming really good friends with a boy named Adrian, um, who has ADHD. His father is the CEO or creator of Pomegranate industries, um, which they are creating these like really high-tech, really advanced AI or kind of, um, what would you call them? Yeah, holograms. Um, and one of the things that they are supposed to be used for that they're, the company's making a big deal out of is that this is going to be really good to help people who are grieving because if they've provided the information on this person, like family or friends have done this, then they are able to interact with a like facsimile of that person after they're gone. So this book deals a lot with grief in a way that I found incredibly compelling and well done and thoughtful and emotional. Um, I mentioned in my wrap up that like even though I am definitely a book crier, it is still pretty rare that I read a book where I like cry so much and I connect to it so much that my ribs hurt. <laughs> um, it was like a very physical reaction to this book, but I thought it was fantastically done. I loved 
Adrian and Cora's friendship so much. They're probably one of my favorite fictional friendships that I've read. I just... I felt for them so much. I loved their friendship. I loved the way this book explored that. I loved them both as characters. Um, this book also deals with eugenics and ableism in, I think, a really, really thoughtful way. Um, and I found this just very compelling. Again, I thought the exploration of like this technology and then also of grief, I think those things were done fantastically. Um, yeah, I just, I loved this so much. I, Ella McNichol is quickly becoming a favorite author for me. And then finally, my favorite science fiction book that I read in 2022, probably not a surprise. That is The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. Um, yeah, not a surprise because this is one of my all-time favorite authors. Um, this was mine and Yvette's like annual or like traditional Silvia Moreno-Garcia buddy read and I absolutely love this. Uh, this was another five star. I know that some people have really not liked this and I understand it is very character focused. I also know some people don't even consider this sci-fi because the sci-fi elements are pretty minor and the way like the book is using the like story of like the island of Dr. Moreau like it's retelling that story in a very like understated and subtle way in order to talk about other things. So I understand that this is not enough sci-fi for some people but I thought it was fantastic. This book is set in the Yucatan Peninsula um, and as I said it is kind of a reimagining of the island of Dr. Moreau although you don't at all have to read that story. I didn't read it and I was still able to find fo follow this book really well. Their main characters are Carlotta um, who is the title character, daughter of Dr. Moreau, and um, her father has been doing all of these like animal hybrid experiments um, under the like patronage and support of this like wealthy family. And then our other point of view character is Montgomery Lawton who is an Englishman who ends up like being hired to work with the family. And when I tell you like I am so shocked that I ended up being as invested in Montgomery as I was, like Sylvia Mano Garcia can just get me attached to characters that I never expected to be. I just think she's incredible characterization. As I said, this is a very character focused book. It is a very slow burn kind of like tension. Um, yeah, that's not, that's not something everyone likes, but I loved it. And I, I like I said, I loved these characters so much that it, I didn't mind that um, it was mostly about those characters. And kind of the action of the story starts when uh, the son of this wealthy patron shows up and starts causing trouble. I love the way this book talks about colonization and racism and um, also kind of eugenics in a way too. As I said, the sci-fi elements are fairly understated, I think in comparison to what some people were expecting, but I felt like this just really worked. I also think the ending was really interesting. I always love Sylvia Romano Garcia's writing style. It's very clear and has like the perfect amount of like atmosphere and description and everything and um, it's just a very smooth reading experience. Yeah, this is definitely my favorite uh, science fiction book I read in 2022. I, as I keep saying, I understand why it's been very hit or miss for people, but it was obviously a huge hit for me. Okay, so those are my four favorite science fiction books that I read in 2022. Um, not all of these came out that year, but several of them did. Um, maybe just one of them did, but please comment and let me know if you also enjoyed any of these or if you're planning to read any of these. Let me know a science fiction book that you read this year and really loved, um, or this last year I should say, because this is probably going up in 2023. Um, but yeah, like I said, I don't read a lot of science fiction, but apparently when I do, I'm pretty good at finding ones that I enjoy. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!